Hi everyone, it's Becky here. So welcome to another new video on my YouTube channel. Today I am around Plateau Mount Royal area. And more specifically, some of these blocks are named Outremont area or Mile End area. But in general, these areas are called Plateau Mont Royal. And I love the design of these buildings. It's kind of like travel back in time and going to, going to a different space and time. And here I'm approaching this cafe called Cafe Olimpico around Little Italy. Yeah, so Little Italy is another small area around Plateau Mont Royal. Here I'm walking in and the weather is changing. The sunshine is gone, the sky is overcast. Here I'm inside, this cafe is, it looks more like a pub. And oh my, after just uh, about a minute or two, after I got inside, the pouring rain started. Yeah, wow, it's like a different day all of a sudden. I ordered a cup of latte and a slice of apple cinnamon cheesecake and, took, and it took about 10 minutes to sketch them. And after that, the sunshine is back. It feels like an, another different day, wow. So after eating my cheesecake and drinking most of my latte, I'm ready to sketch the view outside the window in front of me. So one of the best things about sketching from real life observations is that we always have a 360 degree view in front of us. If we just take a reference photo and go home, that's what we get. It's only like a part of the 360 degree view. So I was planning to uh, sketch the, uh, the street view only. And then I noticed this couple right outside the window in front of me chatting very actively. And so I decided to include them as the foreground element in, in this sketch. So I'm starting to draw this woman uh, on the left, starting with the shape of her hair. I can barely see her face, it's just the back of her head. Uh, she had a lot of curls. So I just started the outline of her hair. The top part of her head is a little bit smaller compared to the middle and then around her neck. The hair is getting wider and adding some curls. Yeah, I think she has black hair and lots of curls and just including just tiny bit of her uh, eyelashes, a little bit more accentuation for her eyes. It's kind of like a triangle sinking in because that's, that's the eye socket. Adding a little bit more accentuation for her hair around her face. And now I'm starting to draw this man on the right, starting with the contour of, of, around the forehead, the nose and the mustache. I'm starting to add some inner details, like the eyebrows, the eyes, also like a triangular shape. And the nodes and some more beard. And he had long hair a ponytail and adding some more facial features like the ear and then taking a break because uh, people move around a lot in real life and adding some more hair texture around the back of the head and the bun on the back of his head finishing the chin area with the beard and the back of the neck which is a nice curve yeah, around the chin, the, the jawbone right there was a tiny little line. And his hair is black as well, so I'm just using black ink to color uh, his hair, pretty much solid black. And now there's another man sitting down in between them, in the, around the middle ground. So I started to draw his helmet. So he is a cyclist and then drawing those holes on top of the helmet and a little bit of his hair on the side of the helmet, his glasses, he's like looking down on his notebook, his nose and a little a smile right there. There's no need to draw his eyes because the glasses are glaring. Yeah. And adding his collar, shoulders. And on, on the left, there is his bike right beside him, drawing the middle of the bike and the handles. 
this is like a very front view of a bike. It's very foreshortened. So just simplify it into these bar shapes and tiny little squares. And he had a black backpack in between the back of his back and his body. So adding his hand and his uh, notebook over there, very abstract shape and his leg. Yeah, so one leg is actually on, on top of another. The thigh is actually thicker compared to the calf area. That's the same idea for all human bodies and drawing the bench behind him. The bench is like a, an irregular prism. Yeah, so that's a simple way to draw like a person as part of your landscape or cityscape and just adding a little bit of wrinkles around his outfit. There's another bench right behind the man in the foreground that's carved wood, very organic. Okay, so these three people are done. Yeah, so I think I really captured their essence really well. I captured the moment. And now I'm starting to establish the background cityscape area, starting with the line of the sidewalk, as you can see. And then there's this mailbox and the little uh, pole for the traffic sign, the stop sign right here in front of the uh, mailbox. The mailbox is a tiny little prism. Yeah, finishing around the curve of the sidewalk. There is like a little flower bed right here with organic lines for the uh, grasses and flowers, the thickness of the sidewalk. And then there's a little tree there. Just keep connecting one cluster of things after another. So when we are translating reality into uh, drawings and paintings, um, a lot of a lot of the lines and brushwork that we make can be very abstract and symbolic. And this is how we simplify reality. And so I just drew a really nice little red motorcycle on the very right hand side. There's another an cool element to add to this landscape um, or cityscape. It actually gives more identity to this part of the city. And let's keep connecting more abstract shapes, the railings of this restaurant on the side, and this is the front door of the sushi restaurant. Yeah, and drawing the door frame and these smaller frame details, the posters on the glass door. And there's actually a little tree kind of overlapping on top of the uh, uh, upper part of this restaurant. So just drawing the contour outline of this tree right now. So barely looking at the paper and just focusing on what I see in front of me. So keep seeing and keep feeling and keep putting these lines on paper and stop judging what comes out uh, from your pen, okay? Yeah, so just keep re uh, interacting with the world in front of you because the more that you see deeply and interact with what's in front of you uh, sensationally, the more lively that your line works will be. Yeah, and just keep adding some more of these abstract shapes, uh, like with the back of a car, and keep drawing these uh, people walking on a sidewalk. And the bushes around. Just want to add another lady beside him so he's not alone. Yeah, so the people's in the distance are actually pretty easy to draw. I always start drawing their head first, which is this, a circle, and their shirt and their pants. Now I'm starting to draw these bicycle wheels overlapping on top of one another very quickly. Yeah, just draw a bunch of circular shapes and the handles that, that pops out from those wheels to give the illusion of, of bikes clustered together. And drawing the outline of the car or the van right there and adding the windows inside the outline and another car behind those behind the couple drawing this um, um, electric pole behind this car and behind the electric pole there's an, another bunch of foliage 
and just adding these uh, tiny little squiggly lines to show the texture of the trees and bushes, adding some little uh, shapes of branches and twigs over there in the distance, with very loose lines. So again, it's very hard to reason of why I'm drawing this way. I, I spend a lot of time just immersing myself in the environment and be sensationally interactive. Now I'm ready to draw this uh, heritage building on the left side after all those foliages. And the left side of this building is covered by another bunch of foliages and drawing the, uh, the little tree, uh, tree, tree trunk over here in the foreground. So I felt that it's good to have another foreground element over here other than those people. It adds more balance and adding some bark textures with short little lines making the line, the outline thicker, so it pops up better. Just finishing the outline and adding these squiggly textures to show the leaves in the tree and tiny little branches or actually little twigs sticking out and adding the lawn and the flower bed underneath the tree and the sidewalk on the other side of the street. There's a little garden over here in front of the house. Adding some details that I can see underneath the tree, um, the little staircase over there, and some, yeah, adding these windows right now. Windows are like the most important element for buildings and coloring in inside those glass with black ink to show density. So as you can see, the uh, perspective of the street scenery in the distance over here is pretty well established. Now I'm just adding these minor details like the balconies, those little windows. Yeah, those windows are in, in, a, in a pattern of small rectangles. And the rooftop of this building is going down towards the right. There's another cube-like building behind it, and the sidewalk line is going up toward the right. So this is the perspective. In this case, it's one point perspective. There is a vanishing point somewhere on the um, right-hand side of the sketch, where the top and bottom of this uh, street view leads to. Now I'm adding some more smaller and abstract details for the foliages. Yeah, so in general, the sidewalk lines are below our eye level, so it's pointing up in this case and adding some more elements that helps with the perspective. The uh, pedestrian walkway, these stripes leading into the vanishing point, and on the other side too, at the manhole, and just trying to finish the uh, the side view of this uh, restaurant over here by adding another man sitting outside on a wooden bench. Yeah, so these lines for the restaurant is pretty straightforward. Just, you know, like perfect rectangles, short little vertical lines because we're looking at this building straight on. Okay, yeah, so this is pretty easy. No perspective, just shapes and these letters, the name of the restaurant, and adding these bars in between the window frame, and some tiny little images of sushi, sashimi there, and also a little bit of accentuation around the window frames. And that's pretty much it. Just adding some final bit of details, these uh, natural carved wood benches, and that's it for the line work. Okay, so the line work took me about 40 minutes to complete. Now I think I need another 30 minutes to do the watercolors. So I'm just wetting the whole area first with clear water. This is the, uh, the color of the sunshine reflecting onto the, uh, the concrete color of the street. Yeah, this is a mix of um, medium yellow or cadmium yellow with a little bit of lemon yellow diluted with lots of water. Yeah, that's the first layer for the street. And now I want to add a tiny bit of cerulean blue on top of the building over there to show in the sunny day sky. Yeah, just first layer, nice and simple, very general for all the areas. And mixing um, orange and burnt sienna together to get this orange brown color for the first layer of this heritage building on the other side of the street. It's very prominent. 
it, it popped up really well on a sunny day against the blue sky. I love that. And the first layer of colors for the foliages is uh, lime green, mixing with a little bit of um, lemon yellow, and dilute it with a lot of water, so it's pretty translucent. First layer, yeah, just pretty clear and transparent washes here and there. Yeah, this is like pretty deep shade. I'm just adding this shade color right now in the first layer because it's very deep anyway. And keep adding this lime green mixed with a lemon yellow mixture around the foliages, bushes here and there. Yeah, and not worrying about you know painting outside the outline. It's okay. Just keep it really loose and playful. And grabbing some vibrant red to paint the exterior of this restaurant over here. Some leftover brown here and there. Yeah, so the orange brown on the left and the red on the right are really nice uh, warm colors that balance out with the greens in between. Yeah, so the first layer of uh, colors are done. Now I'm switching to my smaller tip, a small tip water brush to add to start adding the second layer, adding the shadow of the stop sign there with leftover gray in my palette. And a little bit of uh, shadow from the uh, trees above over here using tiny little brush hooks. Again, using the leftover gray in my palette. So I mix my own gray with blue, green, and a little bit of magenta. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm pretty excited to uh, add the second layer for the trees. So it's a mix of uh, viridian green or any dark shade of green. Okay, and mix in with a little bit of burnt sienna, just a little bit, not too dark yet. And using these choppy brush strokes to show the uh, texture of leaves even better. And a little bit more over here. So there's a sense of rhythm with these brush strokes or foliages. So I'm actually very attentive to the direction of growth of those leaves in the trees. So my brush stroke is following my observations and not just random dots. Yeah, and just keep punching on this um, medium, medium dark tone of green here and there, not everywhere. Pay attention to uh, where the light and shade areas are in this situation. And every brush stroke can be a little bit different and with a different green tone. And adding some of this green for the bushes in the garden area right there. Grabbing some vibrant red to paint the flowers there. Yeah, adding the second layer for the building. It's more of a red brown color. Yeah, so I just use those parallel brush strokes to show the brick texture of this building. And let's see, just kind of doing some little colors here and there with leftover grays. And filling those windows with my leftover grays. And little gaps in between. So a lot of urban objects are actually not that colorful. So a lot of grays in between these colorful stuff. So I just used the leftover grays in my palette made with blue, green, and magenta. And painting these little tree trunks with a dark brown. It could be raw umber. Yep, a little more accentuation around the side of the sidewalk. Some little grays in between and now I'm ready to paint um, the front part of this sushi restaurant. So I make some ultramarine blue with a little bit of royal purple and a tiny bit of green to get this uh, color reflecting. Also mixing in a little bit of the green. The glass is very reflective of the greeneries around and some more dark purple blues. Yeah, windows can be really interesting stuff to paint. And just grabbing some darker grays to add in those middle areas. So you can control the intensity of the color by adding or mixing more or less water into a specific color. So you don't have to always mix in new colors. So for this picture, I think I didn't use a lot of colors. I just play around with the amount of water mixed into these limited amount of colors. 
to create an illusion of uh, density. Yeah, so the view outside is really amazing. So I'm really glad that the, the rain only lasted for like 15 minutes. And it stopped, the sun came back all of a sudden, and it's like another brand new day. And I really loved observing this transition of weathers. Yeah, and now I'm just gonna paint this red motorcycle. It was just red or magenta straight from my watercolor cake. Leave a little tiny little shine in between those little shapes on the motorcycle to show the metallic shine. And using my leftover gray to paint this large patch of shadow from the tree above. Yeah, this is kind of like a purplish gray. Mostly with ultramarine blue, royal purple, and a tiny bit of green. And I'm being very patient using tiny, almost invisible brush strokes to add um, those darker green tones for the bushes. And I think that's pretty much it. Now I'm painting the skin color of these people. So we can mix skin color by mixing orange and red. Dilute this mixture with a lot of water so we get a skin tone. Blending on a little bit burnt sienna, diluted burnt sienna for some darker skin tones. And just painting these uh, people's hair with leftover gray. So blue, royal purple. And for the hair, I mix in a little bit more burnt sienna. Because within their dark hairs, I sense a little bit brown. Blend it in. And for this man's outfit, he, he was wearing jeans. So dark blue and a black jacket. So I just use a black. Uh, from my watercolor cake. Sometimes I do use black when there are a lot of grays all around. And adding a little bit of uh, three dimension for his jeans. He's painting the wooden bench with a leftover brown or burnt sienna. First layer was uh, very watery and now the second layer contains more paint pigment and less water. And that's pretty much it. Here is the look of my finished sketch. Um, yeah, so in total it took me like 75 minutes with the ink and watercolors on location. And I love sketching from real life observations because there's always this 360 degree view in front of us um, and we can always improvise. And so thank you so much for watching my video everyone. If you like it, please click like and leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for weekly updates. I update this channel two to three times a week. And here I'm just walking on my way home to the metro station. It's a really bright and cool sunny day. Yeah, I'll see you around next time everyone. Have a great day.